beginning with verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the gospel of the Lord. All right, you can be seated and... <laughs> Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we want to just stop right now and invite you to be the Lord of this time, the Lord of this sermon, the Lord of this worship. Lord God, we love you. We trust you. We want, uh, we want to love our families well. So help us, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. So uh, as we go on through the summer here, we are still in our Love Well in a Divided World series. And uh, in the, our families, our families might be one of those places where we find some division. Um, it happens at times, doesn't it? And uh, so how do we love our families well? Uh, we need to start off with the premise that we make our families. We make our families. They don't just make themselves. They don't just happen. We make our families. We put into the outcome that is our family situation. And there's all kinds of families. There are traditional nuclear families. There are adopted families. There are blended families. There are foster families. Uh, there are the families that we're born into, and there are the families that we choose. Whatever family situation, uh, we make our families. We expend energy and effort and emotion into the family situation and the family dynamic, and it becomes part of that. And so we need to acknowledge that we make our families, some of our families uh, look pretty heavenly most of the time, and that's good. Um, I've known people whose families are just like living purely in hell. Uh, there's so much abuse going on in the family that, that uh, they just, all they could ever think about was how to escape. So whether you're in a great situation or a hard situation, I want to tell you today that you have access to the power of God in Christ Jesus and the love of God in Christ Jesus to make family with him and to make family, to, make, to bring him into your families, to love your families well and to make that change. Um, when I say, how do we love our families well, I kind of have to admit that I have to come at it from my perspective as a husband and as a father. I'm thinking, how do I love my wife and my children well? Uh, how do I love my mother-in-law and my mom well? You know, I'm a son too, I'm a brother. How do I love my brother well? All of these things. How do I make family into a family of God, my family into a family of God's agape love? How do I do that? And, and your situation is really no different from my situation. The God's absolute truth is absolute truth for all of us. Loving our families well is just as much for me, and how to do that is just as much for me as it is for a couple who can't have kids. Or for a single person who just moved to a new city and doesn't know anybody yet. Or for somebody who is just alone, just bitterly lonely and doesn't think they have anybody. But I want to tell you that Christ wants you. You have access. Again, you have access to the power of the love of God to make family with him and to make family with others. So let's start off with what does uh, loving your family well mean? We need to know what we're talking about. What do we mean when we say love well? And I'm just going to summarize that in three points here. Loving your family well means loving them with the power of God inside of us. We really truly love well when we love with the power of God. Loving our families well, it means loving them with the selfless, divine, all-powerful love of God through the infilling and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. If we want to love well, we don't love by our power, we love by the power that's inside of us that God puts inside of us when he dwells in us. And loving our family well means that you can take 
God's love in action into your family and make a family that reflects and magnifies Jesus Christ. So that's what loving well is. That's what it means. How do we do it? What steps do we take to do it? Love is action. So we are going to look at Psalm 37 today and answer the question, you know, what can I do to make, to make, remember we make our families, what can I do to make a family that reflects God's love and power? And in Psalm 37, what we have here is King David, who is a child of God, a man after God's own heart, speaking to his family and to the children of Israel, God's chosen children. And so in a lot of ways, King David, he has the perspective of a child. He also has the perspective of a father. And so this Psalm 37 is great for us to get uh, some clues on how we can proactively uh, love our families well. So let's look at Psalm 37, verse 1. And the first three words are important. He's going to repeat these words. Do not fret. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But do not fret is one of the hard ones for me. I, I'm a fretter. I, I almost said fritter, but I'm not a fritter. I'm a fretter. All right. Do not fret for any reason. And in their situation, do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Uh, you know, how and where we expend our energy and our emotion matters. And fretting and being envious and other things like that, rebellion, anxiousness, those things don't build anything. They don't produce anything. If anything, they destroy things. Do not fret. Christ does not want us to fret. In the Sermon on the Mount, he spent a lot of time in that sermon talking to us about do not, don't worry. And so what we have here in chapter 6 beginning with verse 33, is the culmination of that part of his sermon about not worrying. Don't worry. He says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Now, if, God's, if heaven is God's kingdom, who's the king of heaven? Jesus. And who is the righteousness of Jesus, uh, of, of God? Jesus is the righteousness of God. So if we want to seek his kingdom and righteousness, we seek Jesus. You seek Jesus and you're going to seek that. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So worrying, fretting, getting ang angry, throwing tantrums, rebelling, none of that is going to help you love your family well. If you want your family to look like Jesus, seek Jesus for your family. If you want your family to look like heaven, we need the Lord of heaven to rule us and our families. What King David is saying here is to trust him. Look at verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. What David is saying is in everything, in, in the ways that we live in the land, live our lives, tr if we do these things, then something will happen. If we trust in the Lord, if we commit our ways to him, then what happens is the desires of God's heart become the desires of our heart. And when the desires of God's heart become the desires of our heart, then we do his work, his way, and we produce godly things. 
It looks like God when we do things his, his way. How then, how do we trust in the Lord when it's hard to trust in the Lord? How do we commit to the Lord when it's hard to commit to the Lord? How do we delight in the Lord when it's hard to delight in the Lord and there's chaos around us? Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger, turn from wrath. Do not fret. That's the third time he's said that. You think it's important? Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. When we're bombarded with feelings of fret or anger, or wrath, or envy, or rebellion. What do we do? He says, be still before the Lord, wait. And when God says wait, when Hebrews, in, he, in Hebrew, the word wait is kava, and I've talked about kava before, but that is connecting to God. It's not just sitting around twiddling your thumbs, you do something. You connect to God. So be still, wait for the Lord. In other words, stop, pray, and invite the Lord into the situation. And when we invite the Lord into the situation, we say, Lord, I want you to rule the situation. The situation becomes his, not ours. Then you'll inherit, in their case, the land. It's the product of his love and action. When the, de- when the desires of his heart or the desires of his ha- are our heart and we're working on that and chaos surrounds us, stop. Pray, invite the Lord to rule it and the product will be his. That's what we want for our families. If you love your family well, you hope that the product for your family is a spiritual product. When we ask the Lord to be the ruler of our families, what we're doing is asking the Holy Spirit to fill us to overflowing so that we can walk in the Spirit with our families. When we walk in the Spirit with our families, then the, the Holy Spirit produces the fruit of the Spirit in our families. Galatians 5 says, the, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance is patience, okay? Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Without the Holy Spirit... Our families can enter into chaos and division. With what? Worry, fret, envy, conceit, anger, all of these things that have been mentioned, and they lead to nothing. They lead to wrath. They lead to destruction. In the Spirit, we have the potential for the fruit of the Spirit to surround our families, beginning with God's agape love and everything else that flows out from that. So we have... Um, Think of your family just living in a constant state of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's like heaven on earth. And we need the Spirit in order for that to happen. Who doesn't want that to happen? I, I don't know. So what will happen if we invite Jesus Christ to be Lord of our families. I think that sometimes we are actually afraid to invite Jesus to be Lord of our families. Because will it make our families be too hot or too cold? And what I mean by that is if you're the only Christian in a family that's full of anger and you start bringing up Jesus, there's some spiritual warfare that's going to happen. There may be some conflict. Things might get hot. Or things might get cold. You might just get shot, shut out altogether. Even in a family where everybody's a Christian, when things are cooking and going smooth, 
and you start stepping it up by asking Jesus to be Lord of your families, the Holy Spirit might lead you in a direction you didn't expect. Things might get hot, things might get cold. This is, this is why the, the letter, Christ's words the, to the church in Laodicea is so important because this, these are the, this is the words of Christ to the church, the family of God, and it is for us, for our families too. This has always kind of convicted me because, you know, if things are going really comfortably and smooth, sometimes I have to wonder, am I running on my steam and Satan doesn't want, you know, things, Satan wants me to be complacent or am I running on God's power which is going to want to change the world and that can be a hot thing or it can be a cold thing. So to the, uh, in Revelation here, verse 14, to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, these are the words of the amen. In other words, the amen is Jesus, the truth, the truth, the truth speaker, the faithful and true witness the ruler of God's creation, I know your deeds that you are neither hot, cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. Why does he wish that we were one or the other? Because if we're not one or the other, it means he's probably not involved. But if he's involved, things are going to probably be hot or cold. Something's going to happen. In other words, if I'm there, spiritual warfare is probably going to happen. And that's a good thing for us, because guess who always wins? Jesus always wins. He's victorious. So Jesus says, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Without Christ, anything that we try to produce is just impotent and pitiful and, and short. It's, it's, it's futile. It's going to fade away and be nothing at best. And it could be destructive at worst. But with Jesus, there's power and there's provision, and there's the potential for the fruit of the Spirit. Jesus says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, so you can become rich, real rich, refined in the fire of the Holy Spirit, real rich, and white clothes to wear, so you can cover your shameful nakedness. Stuff can't cover your nakedness, your shame, only the forgiveness and the blood of Jesus can do that. And salve to put on your eyes so you can see. The, you can't see if you look through the lens of the world, but through Jesus you can really see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. When Jesus Christ is Lord of our families, our families will be refined in the fire of the Holy Spirit and they will bear the fruit of the Spirit the first of which is God's agape love. So how do we love our families well? By making Jesus Christ the Lord of our families. Jesus tells us directly, he says that to his fa church family. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. The one who is victorious, how are we victorious? By making Jesus the Lord of our lives. Because he always wins. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit say, says to the churches. Jesus is telling us to stop and invite him. He loves to be invited. And when he's the Lord of our life, he had victory always. He had victory in his life. He had victory in the garden. He had victory on the cross. He had victory over death. He had victory when he rose. He can have victory in your family. And what he's telling us is, I'm knocking. Invite me. I want to be invited to be the Lord of your family. That's how you can love your family well. 
And so I came up with this acronym because Jesus said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. So I came up with the acronym SPITL, spittle. But it, it helped me remember to stop and pray, invite the Lord. Stop, pray, invite the Lord. When your parent, kids, when your parents are driving you crazy and you don't want to listen to them, you have to honor them. Stop, pray, invite the Lord to be ruler of that situation. Parents, if you have a rebellious kid or a kid who's driving you crazy, stop, pray, invite the Lord into that situation. You could be in the middle of an argument, smack dab in the hottest argument, if you can just remember, stop, pray, invite the Lord. I guarantee you that's going to change the nature of that argument. If you will just stop and pray with your wife or with your kids, In all things, especially in our families, if you want to love them well, stop, pray, invite the Lord, make Jesus Lord, he'll make it new, he'll make it powerful, he will make a victory of love for you and your families. So right now, let's stop and pray and invite the Lord to be the Lord of our our church family and of our families. Lord Jesus, There's nothing that we can do without you and all things are possible with you and you are always victorious. Lord, we just want to stop and pray and invite you to be the Lord of this church, the Lord of our marriages, the Lord of our parenting, the Lord of our uh, being our children and siblings with others, Lord God, the Lord of the families that we were born into, the Lord of the families that we choose our adopted families, our foster families, our friend families. Lord, we, we want to invite you to rule over those things in the power of your love. In Jesus' name, amen.